So thanks uh, a lot to the organizers for uh, inviting me to discuss this paper. Uh, it was a very exciting uh, um, uh, project to, to, to learn about. So um, this paper, uh, as a short summary, uh, as we just heard, um, wants to estimate the effects of macro prudential policy on a local house price growth in, in Belgium, and it uses a, uh, a nice set of uh, municipal level data. And the hypothesis is that uh, potentially heterogeneous effects on house prices uh, is driven by, or at least in part, part uh, is partly driven by a variation in, in shares of credit constrained or high credit risk borrowers in, in each municipality. And the main finding is that indeed uh, it seems that, that it is so. Uh, the, the authors find evidence that house price growth is reduced in locations with higher shares of, of young and low income households, which are proxies for credit constrained households, uh, compared to, to locations with uh, lower shares of this type of households. And the effect is amplified even further when the local housing markets are hot, or in other words, when, when house price growth has been higher um, uh, in those areas in the past. So this is a pretty uh, straightforward paper in a sense. It's an empirical paper and that, that does kind of a, a nice uh, empirical exercise, which I found very interesting. And, and moreover, it's super policy relevant. So not only uh, in an academic sense, but as a, as a central banker who is involved in macro prudential policy analysis, I was very excited to, to seeing this type of, of analysis. So this is uh, kind of in a very concrete manner useful for also for policymakers. Now, um, I have um, kind of three, three main uh, comments. First, I have some um, comments regarding the big picture of the paper and where it fits in. And then um, two, uh, the two usual suspects for any empirical paper, so endogeneity issues, uh, potential endogeneity issues, and then the robustness of the results, which you had to skip for the sake of time, but I'm gonna come back to those. Um, so, the big picture first. What is actually the story you are telling here in the paper? So what I, what I mean by this is, um, the objective of, of macroprudential policy is in some sense pretty vague, at least if you compare it to monetary policy, which is the mandate is, is pretty clear. Uh, it's not so for macroprudential policy where uh, it's usually defined as uh, the objective is to mitigate systemic risk by reducing uh, excessively risky uh, lending or, or, or lending that is excessive um, relative to the uh, debt uh, service capacity of of households or firms also, um, and then to smooth the financial cycle. So this can be interpreted in many ways, and, and, and different countries have uh, financially different setups for this. Um, and if you think of house prices and how they fit in here, they, it kind of goes into the financial cycle uh, category there. So, so, so we think of this kind of feedback loop between uh, excessive mortgage credit growth that feeds into house prices, that feeds back into credit growth through higher collateral prices and so on. So this can spiral out of control and we want to, want to prevent that. So, so it's, for that reason, it's useful to um, study the effects of macro potential policy on house prices specifically. But the policies have um, distributional effects. Um, well, first of all, they, they, by construction, they want to target distributions. So they want to cut out lending uh, or borrowing that is deemed too risky from society's point of view. But they also have un unwanted side effects, or they can have. So you cite the p a recent paper by uh, Acharya and co-authors that finds that if you uh, uh, in the Irish data, uh, if you tighten uh, LTV regulation, then um, there's kind of a, a shift to, to, for example, more other types of borrowing, corporate borrowing away from mortgage borrowing. Um, I also want to highlight uh, some re very recent work by my Bank of Finland colleague, Essie Erla and her co-authors that find uh, in the Finnish uh, case using Finnish data that introducing an LTV regulation actually led to, first of all, first time home buyers being priced out of the market. So you, 
mention this, but also those that did borrow uh, actually um, borrowed the same amount in terms of mortgages, so they didn't reduce um, the mortgage size, but then they drained their liquid savings and then had to actually take up more from the other debt to compensate. So it kind of spills over to um, other uh, sectors um, or parts of the financial market. So, so now um, I want to know how important and significant are your estimated effects in economic terms. So as a policymaker, if I see your estimates, uh, do I think uh, macroprudential policy uh, is a success? So it has uh, the desirable impact on stabilizing housing markets, uh, potentially, but then um, what are the side effects? Um, or uh, does it manage to stabilize the housing market? So, so I know the average impact of the policy is kind of absorbed in the fixed effect. So you can only say something about differential effects uh, relative to the average um, in, in different municipalities. But could you kind of dig out something about um, how significant in economic terms are your estimated uh, impact? So, and then I, I know it's, um, you don't have maybe the data to do this, but at, at least you should uh, put a bit more context around the results that you present in, uh, that helps me think about whether um, potential side effects are important uh, and also maybe what is the structural model or story in the background that you have in the back of your mind that can also inform uh, us about what proxies to use for for in that measuring uh, indebted households in different locations. So, so you kind of, um, to put it in both historical context and, and, and also in a kind of a theoretical context a bit more clearly. Uh, and also just as a, it would be nice as a re reader to have a map of um, the time series of house price growth in, in Belgium on the aggregate because I don't know if there was a boom to begin with uh, or not. Okay, so then uh, some words on endogeneity issues. So, um, of course, macro potential policy and the housing market related tools in, in spe uh, specific are likely to be endogenous to house price dynamics. Well, this is not an issue if they are endogenous to uh, the aggregate house prices at the national level, but then I, I can see that potentially they could be also endogenous to the local house price development, and this would be an issue too. Maybe the policymakers in Belgium pay more attention to house prices in, in Brussels, for example. Um, so you do control for lagged house price growth at the municipal level, but maybe there is uh, a bit more you, you could do to, to make the case more convincing. And then there are the spillover effects across municipalities. So you have yearly data, right? So. Uh, both um, borrowers and households have time to move across locations within the year. Um, so if you tighten policies, these kind of affected households could move to more affordable locations. You have a footnote saying that this is likely not a big issue, uh, but it could still be an issue. And then it's not only the borrowers, but also lending that can reallocate geographically. So Acharya et al. provides some evidence for this in the Irish case, and this, this could be an issue issue as well. So, uh, things to, to think about. And now finally, uh, I have a few worries about how you measure macroprudential policy and, and your indicators for um, um, uh, the amount of indebted or credit constrained households. So, your results are not really robust to using this kind of more traditional qualitative index of macroprudential policy. Um, and as I understood it, your, your, uh, your index is kind of just a weighted or scaled version of this. So I'm a bit puzzled why, um, if you use the qualitative index of this one minus one zero index, uh, even the signs flip on some of the coefficients. Um, so why does that happen and wh what is the policy index actually capturing that, that you kind of uh, um, sum up three index indices. One is a supply side, so the risk weight policy and two demand side, so this LTV uh, um, rest, uh, lim limits. Uh, 
into one, and they have different transmission channels. So, um, I would maybe think of trying to use them, and also, well, I, I'm not sure if it's an issue for you or not, but the, I mean, you only have basically three changes, or three tightenings happening within your 10-year period, so there's not, not much temporal variation either, but I mean, you use the cross-sectional variation rather than the, you know, um, temporal one, so maybe that, that's not an issue, but maybe you might want to look at, an, uh, at least as a check to, for alternative identification strategies where you focus on the introduction of a particular policy at a time and then look at what happens around that instead of having this um, um, kind of index and see whether your results survive. Um, uh, you also do check in the paper for um, robustness to common uh, shocks that may, may have heterogeneous impacts, namely COVID, um, and your results are not entirely robust to that one either. And that made me think that maybe um, your proxies for credit constraint and high-risk households are noisy. So you use these things like low-income households, young households, single-parent households. Um, but this actually links very nicely to the presentation we saw uh, in, the, in the morning session where actually this kind of measuring um, household indebtedness is not a clear-cut thing, and maybe your proxies are, are a bit too noisy, and they may also capture things that are not so much about credit constraints or credit risk, but other socioeconomic uh, differences. So you also might want to want to think about that uh, a bit, bit more. Okay, and just a minor comment, you, uh, the paper is long, <laughs> you can streamline it. Uh, your indicator for household indebtedness, I don't know if it's a data availability thing, but you should ideally define it, not as a ratio of, amount of outstanding mortgages, but a ratio of debt to income or wealth or assets. Or, well. But to conclude, the, the, the paper is, um, very nice, uh, interesting work, and it contributes to our understanding on, on heterogeneous effects of macroprudential policy at the, at the lo local level. Uh, you have a lot of material in the paper already. Basically, all of uh, the comments that I have, you already touched up upon on your paper. So I guess it's just a question of how to frame it, how to focus it, and how, uh, and how, how to try to make the case even more convincing on, on thinking a bit about these, uh, poli the policy index, uh, the proxies you use, and then the, the, the identification strategy. Well done. Thanks. <laughs>